Hello and welcome back to another video. I want to talk a little bit about the art student curse and how I broke out of it in kind of a podcast style session. I'll just have a little painting going on in the background because I was I was looking at my past videos and I realized we haven't had a gouache painting session in a while. I know you guys really like those so feel free to grab your own sketchbook and your own paints and paint along with me. Also long time no face video. I haven't shown my face in a video for quite some time so here it is if you didn't know what I looked like. Yeah I'm recording all my audio on my iPhone and my voice memos app because I don't have a real mic yet but that it's hopefully coming soon, but yeah, let's just get into the video. I also have my notes right here because I cannot ad lib at all. So yeah, if you see me looking down here, it's just where all my scripts and notes are. So what exactly is the art student curse? So let me set the scene. Uh, you've been drawing for quite some time now, maybe since you were a kid or maybe just for like the past couple years or so. You really want to be a professional artist, whatever that means, and you've been working really hard to develop your skills and nail the fundamentals that every pro artist is talking about. Um, you end up having a really solid grasp of like technical drawing or painting skills, but when you actually try to start a project, you feel lost and overwhelmed and retreat back to studying in your sketchbook until somehow you build the confidence to actually work on your art. I think the art student curse is kind of this idea of like, we get so caught up in focusing on improving our technical skills as an artist and like the nitty gritty details, which is really great. And it helps to like improve like our like actual like draftsmanship and like painting skills. But this often leads to like us forgetting about the purpose of our artwork and the reason why we are making art in the first place. And that's not to discredit you if you are you just want to do studies or super technical breakdowns of anatomy. That's completely fine. And and I think I would consider that art in itself. That's just my opinion. I think a super cool anatomy breakdown or just some studies of some like mushrooms or something could be really interesting and is definitely art in itself. And I think that's definitely why sketchbook tours are so popular on their own as a video. But I think if you're like actually looking to make fully finished pieces and like paintings, illustrations or animations outside of the practice sessions, you actually have to do those things and let go of the training wheels of just doing practice. So when I felt like I was in like this constant paradox loop of just practicing and studying and never feeling ready to actually make artwork, I found that I was spending a lot of my time just sketching in my sketchbook, which is definitely a great habit to have and sets up a great foundation for future projects and improving your skills. But when that's the only thing you're doing with the intention of wanting to get better at doing like full pieces of work, um, like maybe a comic or like a full digital painting, you're never going to improve at those things because you're not practicing those things. Of course, that makes sense. And you wanna know what also makes a lot of sense? Online safety. Being an online creator and freelancer, I conduct a lot of my personal and professional business online. And with one quick Google search, you can find my business email. And in fact, it's even in the description of this video. I like to use it to reach out to brands and potential clients, but I didn't account for the massive amounts of spam and scam emails I would receive. And also the potential of my information being sold by data brokers. I think with more and more of our lives being linked to the internet, our information is a lot more susceptible to data brokers who sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who wants to target you. This can be your address, health records, relatives, or any other sensitive information is all potentially available for anyone to find. So I've been using Aura, the sponsors of today's video, to show me which data brokers are selling my info and automatically submitting opt-out requests, saving me time and anxiety with growing my online presence. After I signed up to Aura, I found out that there is 18 data brokers selling my information, but Aura was automatically submitting opt-out requests and ensuring my online privacy for me. Cleaning this information from the internet helps to reduce spam and also protects me from hackers trying to access my social media accounts or even my bank accounts. There are other features with Aura, including an antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, and so many other features at an affordable price. I'm a busy little artist and I like to keep it that way and make more art, so I'm relieved to know that Aura is always on, keeping me safe so I could do more of what I love with peace of mind. You can go to aura.com sketches or click the link down below in the description to start your two-week free trial of Aura. 
Aura. Big thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Now back to the video. So first, I had to reframe how I want to use my sketchbook and to mainly use it as more of a like a first step rather than a final result. In my case, I really wanted to make more digital art and digital painting. So realistically, I would have to devote more time to working on my tablet and planning actual compositions and scenes with my characters. I think a lot of beginner artists see beautiful sketchbooks here on YouTube and think, and think they have to make complex spreads and fully finished perfect artwork in each of their sketchbook pages which once again if like if that's your main goal for your sketchbook to just like have all your finished artwork and all your finished products and just like do a bunch of finished artwork in your sketchbook that's completely fine i have nothing against that i think it's like a great way to kind of like keep track of all your artwork but if you're wanting to be like an artist outside of your sketchbook like an illustrator concept artist a animator painter you're, I think using your sketchbook like that might be holding you back from other projects that you want to pursue and your sketchbook should mainly become a place where you work out the beginnings of ideas and like sketch out different poses, um, write out different scenes. Um, your sketchbook really has a potential of becoming sort of a playground where you experiment and fit stuff together and most importantly make mistakes and fail and after I sort of started to implement this like different mindset with sketchbooks um, my sketchbooks have drastically evolved over the past couple of years I still do some painting and more like finished artwork in my sketchbook because I think it's fun to film and it's, it's fun to do in my um, free time but apart from my other artwork like in this video I'm like literally painting in my sketchbook and working on something more finished Mainly, they ended up being used for like tests and sketches, trying to figure out like a pose I want for a character sheet um, or a composition for a digital painting. Um, because of that, my sketchbooks are a lot messier and contain a lot more unfinished drawings and a ton of mistakes and a ton of ideas I may never get to do. But overall, they've become a really healthy, creative space to try new things, make mistakes, and, and most importantly actually learn from those attempts so that the finished piece outside of my sketchbook is the best that it can be. I think I had this mindset a lot when I was, I, I think I honestly kind of grew up on YouTube, um, especially as like a young artist and not really having super structured art classes growing up. So I would go to YouTube and watch like tons and tons of sketchbook tours and just like, oh this is so amazing, I want my sketchbooks to look like this, but I didn't really understand what sketchbooks sketchbooks were really used for artists and it's completely personal to each artist but sketchbooks I think should ultimately help you in whatever art journey you have and not hinder you from, like having to be perfect all the time. So I think reframing your sketchbook can be a really great starting point but one of the biggest tips that any professional artist will give you is that if you want to be a painter make paintings. I know pretty controversial pretty it's a pretty hot take um i i know this statement is obvious like yeah of course anyone could tell you that but this statement is specifically directed towards art students who are forever in the intermediate learning purgatory like i was like you have some skill but putting it all together purposely for a specific project is difficult and daunting you want to stay in your comfort zone with like fun figure studies and painting still lives and again i want to reiterate i do think think that studying and like doing studies is an art in itself. There are so many amazing fine artists who do nothing but figural work and it's emotional and beautiful but but in my case I want to draw epic fight scenes with my vampire hunter cowboy OCs and I don't think drawing a bunch of naked people over and over again will get me there although it does partially help with anatomy and and all that stuff but that's besides the point point. and this can be like baby steps like doing like little mini paintings or like mini comic strips until you feel more comfortable with bigger and more complex projects I'm a huge proponent of starting small and gradually building up with projects that require more time and energy commitment I feel like these like mini art projects really allow you to test the waters and figure out what what works for you and what you like to make and it it helps to build confidence over time in in your ability to finish something like no matter how small and that that small confidence that you're building will like snowball over time and a big painting project you have in mind doesn't seem as daunting to tackle because you've done it before like you've done all these mini projects and you've proved to yourself that you could do it so 
you can do it. I feel like I keep on like reiterating the same thing. So TLDR, if you want to be a certain type of artist, whether it be an illustrator, comic artist, concept artist, digital painter, you have to make that type of art. I think there's a misconception that you will finally start making professional, fully finished projects when you get your first job, but this is like completely false. An art director wants to see your own projects and examples of the type of work that you do. And you have to be able to show them that you have experience with the type, with that specific type of artwork pertaining to that job um, that you're applying for. No matter if it's just your own personal character design project or something you did for another company. I think that showing like personal projects, this, this shows uh, like personal initiative and like commitment on your own end and this is really valuable to any employer especially in the employment environment right now holy cow it's it's horrible you don't have to give up on your studies entirely i think as artists we are always hungry to explore new things and observe new subjects so make sure to like still lean into that still incorporate that into your daily process as an artist you could even include what you are studying or a technique that you learn in a project that you're working on. This allows you to feel like you are progressing while also cementing that knowledge through application in your own artwork. I always kind of thought it as being similar to like learning a new language. You can study the vocabulary, the grammar, and do all the practice that you want, but truly taking yourself to fluency to like the next level is throwing yourself into the uncomfortable, awkward conversations and stretching your mind to think intuitively and make decisions rapidly and apply what you know. Over time, this becomes easier and you barely have to think about speaking in that language. You just do it. And the same thing can be applied to your art projects. It may seem incredibly daunting and awkward at first to take everything you learned and make a whole new composition and try a whole new art project. And honestly, it may not turn out how you thought it would. It, it may like crash and burn, but you learn from those mistakes and you realize what things you need to know to be able to do those projects. And over time, after continually building that skill and building a workflow that works for you, it, it becomes second nature and it doesn't seem as scary. And it's just the way you create. But I think sometimes when you want to expand out of your sketchbook and out of your comfort zone, you might not even know where to start and and that's where having a key list of five or more artists like right there in your sketchbook or somewhere like easy to reach and easy to see having that visible and having that to reference can be really helpful in trying to figure out what you want to include in your portfolio so having strong inspiration sources and a strong direction with where you want to go with your art is really key to making the pieces that really matter to you and figuring out like who you want to be as an artist and how to get there and just makes it so much more fulfilling of a process i think the draftsman podcast mentioned this idea but having really strong like art parents artists you look up to and want to strive to reach their level is is extremely helpful to finding your own voice the this list of artists should be like your guidebook um looking at their work and stealing the bits and pieces that you like that's also why i suggest looking at more than one artist so that your artwork doesn't look exactly like just one artist unless that's your goal more power to you if you want to emulate a certain style i have nothing against that but i find that having multiple artist inspirations truly helps to develop the way you create and, and make it more personal to you okay so now that you actually started to make like fully finished pieces and start to develop more artwork i think it's really important to get some feedback on what you're doing either from mentors doing a portfolio review or just showing your fellow art friends your art and just like hey what do you think of this what's going on um asking them what they understand from your work and especially if it's like a narrative or like some sort of design work it's really important to have that like read clearly and communicate what you want and that it's reading well to a viewer who is not you and having that outside perspective really helps you to catch any errors or point things out that may have been missed by you since you've probably been staring at that piece of artwork for like 100 hours or so this could also mean like joining art discord servers by the way i'm still working on my discord server and just trying to find time to like get it ready to launch and prepare but it's coming soon i promise posting your work 
and getting feedback um, from a variety of artists, making friends and even networking. This is all really important. So just like growing as an artist, especially if you want it to be a part of your career, having those connections is really valuable. And like I said, with this employment environment, it's really who you know, you can apply as much as you want, but some but sometimes it's just knowing someone and that helps you get a job. So I also think one of the best ways to get consistent and constructive feedback is to either be in a class or mentorship with an instructor. This is definitely more difficult to achieve because you know, it costs money. I'm currently saving a little fund of money to hopefully take some sort of online mentorship program next year to really polish my portfolio. If I still plan on trying to get into the industry, I'm not sure yet. Um, I've never done like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Um, so I, I can't exactly like fully recommend it because I have no idea like how it works or I have no experience. So I've heard other artists experiences and how valuable valuable it was to their art and their professional career. You can also build these like sought after like connections and networking abilities through this person, which is extremely valuable in the art world. Once again, the employment pool is really weird right now. And sometimes just knowing someone can get your foot in the door. Most importantly, throughout this entire intermediate artist training arc, of like stretching your wings and working on projects. You should really be checking in on yourself and how you're feeling with your own work. This can be scary, especially if you realize that maybe you don't like making comics as much as you thought you would, or maybe painting just really isn't enjoyable of a process as you pictured it to be. Um, being an artist is a continual discovery and rediscovery of what you wanna create and I think this is a natural part of your journey and you don't know if you'll like something until you try it. So I would take some time to reflect on what you're creating and maybe write about it a little bit. It could be some things that you're really excited about exploring in the future, like ideas for future projects, characters, stories for those characters. Um, maybe making like a note of some like little fundamental skills that you need to revisit or some other art skills that you should add to your tool belt to complete the projects that you really want to make. Um, right, right now for me, I think that's kind of exploring a little bit of um, animation and maybe like After Effects because I really want to include some more like cute effects and like motion graphics into my videos. It's not necessarily a part of my artwork, but it's definitely a part of like my creation process and adding that to my videos so that's that's what I am currently interested in right now so I always encourage self-reflection and mention it in so many of my videos because it truly really helps like me and my own experience to be like mindful with my artwork and really help and really help in the process of making the art that I truly want to make instead of just instead of just feeding social media algorithms I know this video is probably getting a little long but Let's talk a little bit about social media, everyone's favorite topic. Yo, let's go. <laughs> I'm not saying anything new in that social media affects us a lot as artists. It can determine how we feel on a daily basis on like depending on how, how well our art performs through our posts, how many likes we get, how many followers we have. And in my own experience, it can affect what we make. Sketches are quick and more easy to post often than fully finished pieces. And they typically perform well. People really like to see sketches and like more loose, unfinished artwork. Um, and especially like sketching content on YouTube and sketchbook tours, like, yeah, there's people really like it. And my best performing videos are honestly all of my sketchbook tours, which means there's even a monetary incentive to me to continue to fill sketchbooks and post them, which which sometimes kind of feels a little like, I don't know how to describe it. It's It definitely feels a little wrong, but it's also like, it's blurring the lines between, am I filling the sketchbook to help my artwork? Or am I filling the sketchbook just so I can get a paycheck next month or something like that? I don't know, it's strange. I'm, I'm thinking about making a video about it, um, hopefully coming up soon, but yeah. These little boosts of dopamine of like getting more social media attention and sticking to a constant posting schedule um, so that the algorithm likes us. Um, I think this leads to just making what performs well and making art to and appease that certain demand that we know is like there and is popular and does well. This happened to me around the same time last year. I would just post sketchbook content on Instagram and on YouTube and it would perform decently well. Of course, 
here I am pointing out that my name is Sketches of Shay. Like, I see that. I know. Yeah, it's part of my content. It's technically part of my brand. Um, that feels weird. I don't like saying that. <laughs> but just devoting my time to producing sketches and drawings wasn't satisfying my initial desire to actually develop long-term paintings and projects, which it ultimately stunted my growth as an artist last year. Like, that's the truth of it. Like, I just spent so much time just doing sketches and stuff that I didn't do as many, like, bigger projects and, like, bigger paintings. I, I honestly felt bad about my art. I felt bad about my art and felt bad about myself as an artist and definitely was starting to feel that imposter syndrome because I was just like, my accounts are, like, growing and I'm, like, getting more, like attention for my artwork but I don't necessarily like my artwork and I don't feel like it's that good this is me talking like a couple months ago I, I don't think the same way anymore I'm still very critical of my artwork but I wasn't as like um cynical about my artwork as I was like a couple months ago but yeah I was just like I don't really like my artwork right now um it just seems like it's sketchbooks there's no real like really like substance and like really fully finished projects that I can like be proud of so it's like I felt bad even if like my social media metrics were like showing me differently that they like the, the social media was like really popping off and like really doing well. I'm here to tell you that it, it may feel good in the moment to like pump out drawings and sketches to feed the content machine to grow your accounts. And, and heck, sometimes it's even necessary in this day and age, especially on things like Instagram, like doing like short periods of time where you're just like producing a lot of content in like preparation for maybe like a shop launch or maybe you're releasing like your membership tiers or you're just just looking to grow your accounts. I, I, I feel like it is beneficial sometimes to just like focus a little bit more on content just so that you can get your art out there. But it's it's not really worth it to do that in like a long term span. And it really ends up hurting you as an artist and your artwork in the process. I feel like it's good to never lose sight of what you truly wanted to make in the first place. So like this could be like taking breaks from like posting constantly and taking more like bigger time periods to to devote to longer term projects that will feed your artistic soul more than any number on your analytics dashboard. Um, make art that you really care about and that you're passionate about and that and I think that will show through when you or if you decide to post it on social media and get feedback from friends and mentors and just continue to hone in on your craft and your stories and, and people see the hard work and the love that you're pouring into these projects. And it, I think it ultimately creates such a like a deeper relationship with your viewer. It's not like it's not like a shotgunning a beer style of consuming artwork where it's gone in like two seconds. It's more just like it's like savoring like a fine wine or like like a coffee or like a latte or something like you're taking your time you're enjoying the moment you're enjoying this piece of artwork i feel like it's important that we just en enjoy the process of creating enjoy the journey like slow down and take the time to explore the things that interest you no matter how mundane or weird or cliche it's your art and only you can make it and it's so valuable to the world that you continue to share your stories and share who you are and not what the content machine demands and that's what hopefully i'll be doing this year it's it's really difficult it's really tempting not to just like feed the algorithm and see those numbers and get that dopamine hit but yeah, I think slowing down and truly taking the time to exploring these ideas and characters and stories that, that really interest me and just sharing them on this channel. Like this little painting study that I did in this video, um, this is to help me get in the mood for a Night Sona design video I'm planning for this channel. I think it'll be the next video after this video. So I'm designing my own Night Sona, um, this, this character right here in this um, sketchbook spread and another night design. Very planty, lots of green. Um, I'll show a little sneak peek right here. But yeah, this video should be coming out um, next week, this Night Sona video. I think YouTube, I also think one more thing about the social media thing. I think YouTube is such a better place for artists to have like a presence online and really allows us to slow down, to share more about our work in a sustainable and meaningful way instead of just like a ton of short form, easy to consume content that takes like a painting you spent hours on and reduces it to like two seconds. So yeah, YouTube is definitely a better um, 
way to go if you're gonna take the social media route and if you're interested in starting a channel you can watch this video I don't know where it's gonna be on screen but you can watch it and uh, I talk a little bit about how I film my artwork and record voiceovers all on my iPhone like what I'm doing right here so yeah but yeah see you next week uh, take care and draw what you want all right bye